Hello and welcome back to Haskell Live Coding Fast Algorithm Episode 6. So I think I said last time that we would be moving on to part 3, rescoring diagonals, um, but that is not going to happen. And the reason is, um, in order to rescore the diagonals, we need to know the start and stop indices of the diagonal because and you're free to look over this, but each diagonal is responsible for a specific gapless alignment of subsequences. So, basically what we want to do is once we know the score of a particular diagonal, for example this one's 4, we also need to know where it starts and stops. So this one happens to start here at index 0, 3, and it stops here at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, you know, 6, 8, or something like that. Um, and the reason is because when we go over this diagonal to score it, we're going to basically give a positive score to the <clears throat> matching characters and a negative score to the mismatches. So intuitively, what a gapless alignment is, is you, you just line up this query string on the database string without splitting it anywhere. So if I were to align it here, then I would line up the A with that A. And then how I would score it is, you know, these three characters get positive scores, negative... Why does this look weird? Oh, um, it looks weird because I forgot that also um, this asterisk basically represents a match of three characters and so does this one but it basically means an additional match of one because the, there are two characters overlapping with the previous asterisk and so on so <clears throat> and finally this this last asterisk means there's a match of three here um, so we basically want to know the index where the matches start which corresponds directly to this index, and the index where the matches stop, which is basically this index plus k minus 1. Right? Because it's the last k tuple that matches is right here, where, you know, with k is 3, then there are two extra characters that match here. Um, so, we need to modify our representation of a diagonal scores rather a diagonal scores map it's not just going to be a map from int to int it's going to be a map from int to um, diagonal info and a diagonal info is basically going to have three things in it a score a start index um, and it only needs one int as opposed to a pair of ints because we know the the diagonal index so the diagonal index and just one index into one string will tell us exactly what cell that's at gonna make a comment index into s1 <clears throat> okay so I'm going to need to get at uh, the score start and stop um, eventually, because I'm going to either want to create a new diagonal info or adjust an existing diagonal info with my adjust with default method. And so basically, any time I need to use record syntax and do any kind of getting or setting, I like to use the lens library because it's nice and clean. And it takes a little getting used to, but once you kind of know how to do some rudimentary things, you'll end up with a lot cleaner code, uh, especially for stuff like this. So we're bringing it back. 
And right now I'm just going to grab Make Lenses. Um, make Lenses is a template Haskell function. And it'll basically make a lens for every um, field that begins with an underscore. And the lens is going to be called the same thing without the underscore. So, don't want to forget to do this. Language pragma. Okay, and let's try compiling. Error? Oh, okay. So I've updated my definition of a diagonal info, and that's as far as I've gotten. I'm sorry, a diagonal scores. So let's look over our old code. What do I want to do? Well, it looks like what I was doing before was immediately turning my list of pairs into diagonal indexes but I need to know for, e for each pair that represents a cell in the dot plot and I need to I can't just use the diagonal index because then I lose the actual index into the string information which because I'm representing the start and stop in terms of indexes into S1. Really all I care about in this tuple is the first element. So instead of calling this function increment diags, I'm just going to call it to diag score. Okay, and I no longer want to modify those elements by mapping over them. I just want to diag score to do everything. So it doesn't just get a list of ints, it gets a list of indices. And let's see, this is going to be kind of a doozy. Um. Well, I am going to be mapping over this thing with a map M, and my function that I'm going to map over these tuples with is going to be in the state diagonal scores monad. So we can start with that. And the x that we get here is a single tuple. So I want to do a few things. First, I want to well, I want to do only one thing, which is adjust with default. Um, and how I want to adjust with default, well, I need to modify the state, of course. So. Um, my default is going to be just a diagonal um, info with a score of 1, just like before. And the start and stop are just going to be the diag index. So let's get a, let's get a, I don't think I'm going to need this do. I think it's just going to be a, a map M, but let diag index equal. No, I am totally wrong. The start and stop, this is relative to string one, so I'm just going to call it index, this first x. Sorry for that confusion. Okay, so that is my default value. Now, this um, argument to adjust with default is what I want to do when this diagonal info already exists with some information. So there are three things I want to do. I want to increment the score, and I want to possibly alter the start and stop 
because I may have run across an index that remember that these this is just an association list there's no there's no ordering to it I haven't sorted it anywhere so every time I see a number every time I see one of these indexes I need to basically possibly modify the diagonal info I'm looking at so we'll do each of these in turn and we'll use our handy dandy notebook we'll use the lens library so I guess I'll do the score first my lens is called dscore and I want to set it to oh sorry I want to modify it by adding one okay then I'm going to gotta get my precedence right here compose this on to I wanna get my D start lens and I want to modify it with min index and the same exact thing for stop okay and oh this can go away and finally what's the next argument oh the next argument is the key so the key to this thing oh this is where I'm gonna need the diag index because that is my key and what does it need it needs n I have n and x and that will do it right I need that function and I forgot this argument but I don't actually need it Oh my god, it compiled. That was amazing. Holy shit, I feel so good. Oh my god. Um, let me fix some of this. Uh, so, I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, I realize I'm totally glossing over how lenses work. Um, and that's because this, this technique is just... It's too big for me to explain in one of these short 15 minute videos. Maybe eventually I'll try to do a, a, a video that's sort of like a lens tutorial, but I think there's ample information already out there. I'm just kind of trying to finish this algorithm before my final on Tuesday. So suck it bitches. Um, is there any cleanup I can do before I end this? Uh, I don't see any. So right now I'm going to see if it works. Am I recording this? Yes, I am. Okay, fuck. <laughs> uh, oh, what I also want to do, so I don't have to keep on typing these strings in, is just give me something to work with. Oh, and in a previous video, I, I realized why... Um, ah, tiny. Why the I and J indices were mixed up, and that's because... I accidentally put S1 as the top string, but up until that point, I had been considering the left string to be S1. So, A, T, C, G, T, A, T, C, G. C, A, G, A, T, C, G, T, C, T. Shit, I got lost. C, A, G, A, T, C, G, T, C, T, C, G, A, T. Okay. Now, hopefully that will save me some time. Dot plot S1, S2. Oh, I'm going to have to deriving show, aren't I? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm just going to do that right now. Well... Diagonal scores, length of S1 on dot plot. 
Yeah, okay. Okay, now it should work. Okay, let's look at this. So let me pull up a F size 24. <clears throat> okay, so first we have at index six, a diagonal info with a score of two. So here's index zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. The score is correct. It starts at five. Error shit. It stops at five. Um, so it looks to me like it starts at zero, one, two, three, four, five, and stops at six. And that is because I am retarded. No magic here, just being retarded. Oops. So I want to stop at the max. Clear that shit. Okay. Where am I? GCI. Okay, so now we can see that we start at 5 and stop at 6. That's good. The next one is at index 11. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And it starts at 0. And remember, these are indices into S1. So it starts here, which it does. And it stops at 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So one thing I forgot to do was add k minus 1 to stop. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now because it's trivial and I think this video has gone on long enough. But it looks like what I did was right. So I'm just going to check this last one. This was number 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And it starts at 1 and stops at 1. So it does. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. And now I am in a position to move on to the next step which is rescoring diagonals. So I will see you then. Thanks.